Thank you so much for taking time from your busy schedule to join us on a date with destiny. It is my prayer today that you will allow the power of the Holy Spirit to invade your heart as never before. And if you've never really and truly repented of your sins and made Christ your Lord and Savior by faith, you'll do that today. God bless you. I love you. The title of this message is, Why Should You Live Like Everybody Else? We're living in a very decadent age, not only in America, but all over the world. People are living like there is no tomorrow. The Apostle Paul tells us how people will be living in the days in which we're living now. The last days, the Bible calls them, the days before the second coming of the Lord Jesus. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Why should you live like everybody else? But know this, that in the last days perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying its power, and from such people turn away. Would you pray with me? Father, in Christ's name, we thank you that before the foundation of the world, you knew that we would all be here today. I'm aware, Father, of the assignment that is before me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight. Father, may not one word leave my tongue, but that it does not first come from thee to me. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. No generation in American history has witnessed such a rapid decline in its culture as is this present generation. The United States of America has fallen off a moral precipice into an immoral abyss. Anything goes. Sexual perversion, which is called homosexuality, has now become the norm in a nation that once agreed with God's Word that it is an abomination to God, which means that lifestyle is utterly disgusting and abhorrent to God because He created Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. Right is being called wrong, and wrong is being called right. Isaiah 5.20, Isaiah has this to say, Woe to those who call evil good and good evil, who put darkness for light and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. All over the world today, we're witnessing terrible times of societal degeneration, of mass corruption, and of a total breakdown of law and tradition. Nationally and internationally, the human race has more resources to educate itself than at any time in history, but yet the human race moves further away from the truth of the Word of God. Ravi Zacharias, the Christian apologist, states, and I quote, Mankind has educated himself into imbecility. End of quote. We're living in perilous times. Perilous means difficult, troublesome, trying, uneasy, hard, violent, threatening, and dangerous times. Paul tells a young Timothy that this is how the world will be in the last days before Jesus returns to take his children home to heaven. Jesus is coming soon. Are you ready to meet him? Have you truly been born again? And if so, are you living the life of a real follower of Jesus Christ? Today, you have been hearing from the Holy Spirit in your life for some time that you're not where you need to be with Christ in your relationship with Him. Perhaps you've never really and truly been born again. And the close of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to pray the greatest prayer a spiritually lost person can ever pray, the prayer to truly repent of your sins and make Christ your Lord and Savior by faith. The Bible's very clear. Jesus makes it clear. And he told a religious man by the name of Nicodemus that he had to be born again to go to heaven. To be born again means that, that you know that you're a sinner. The Bible says that we've all sinned and come short of the glory of God in Romans 3.23. 
The Bible says in Romans 6, 23, that the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord, our payment for our sin that we never repent and turn from is eternal separation from God and man in the place called hell. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God, salvation, is a free gift. Why? Jesus paid for your salvation and my salvation on the cross at Calvary. He tells us in John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him will not perish, but have everlasting life. And verse 17 says, For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. And then, to be born again, you must repent. Repent means to change your mind about your sins. Turn from your sins and ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. The Bible tells us in Acts 3.19, Repent and be converted that your sins will be blotted out when the times of refreshing will come from the presence of the Lord. And then the Bible tells us that to be born again, to become a follower of Christ, we must accept Him by faith. Faith is seen even though you cannot believe. The Bible tells us in Ephesians 2, 8 and 9, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is God's love for you and for me that we do not deserve. And because of His love for you and for me that we do not deserve, and our faith in Him, we can be saved. You can't save yourself. I can't save you. No one can save you but Jesus today. And then the Bible says that if you believe in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus, you can be saved. Romans 10, 9 and 10, the Apostle Paul tells us, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you can be saved. For with your heart you believe unto righteousness, and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation. Do you believe in the life, death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus today? And then one of the greatest verses ever written in the Scriptures from the Apostle Paul is Romans 10, 13. For whosoever will call, whosoever, whosoever will call on the name of the Lord will be saved. All you have to do today is call on the name of Jesus and He will cleanse you and forgive you of all of your sins. He'll never reject you. He'll never turn His back on you. Today is the day for you to make that decision at the close of this message. Why should you live like everybody else? If you truly belong to Christ, you are to live like Christ. He's coming soon. Are you ready to meet Him? Selfishness is the law of the last days. God and His church are fitted in only when they do not interfere with personal desires and pleasures, rest and recreation. The Apostle Paul tells us in Romans chapter 12, verses 9 and 10, Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Be kindly affectionate to one another with brotherly love and honor giving preference to one another. Do you care anything about your family? Is your relationship with your God and serving Him in the local church important to you? Are you an unloving person? Why should you live like everybody else? If you truly belong to Christ, you're to live like Christ and repent of being an unloving person and give your heart to Jesus today. Another trait of the people of the last days is that they're unforgiving. Unforgiving. They want to get revenge on people who've harmed them. Vengeful. Vindictive if you do not do as they think you should do. Holding sins over your head that Almighty God has already forgiven and forgotten. Is this you? The Bible tells us in Ephesians 4.32 And be ye kind one to another tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ has forgiven you. Are you an unforgiving person? Why should you live like everybody else today? If you truly belong to Christ, you're to live like Christ. Repent of your unforgiveness today. Give your heart to Jesus. And then we see another trait of the people of the last days, the people who are living like everybody else, is that they're slanderers. They're slanderers. A slanderer is a false accuser. What is slander? 
Slander is the utterance of false charges or misrepresentations which defame and damage another person's reputation. Slander has become a public sport in American culture today in all walks of life, even in the ministry. The Greek word for false accuser is diabolos. Diabolos. This is the very word for the devil. Dr. William Barclay states, and I quote, The devil is a patron saint of all slanderers, and of all slanderers he is chief. There is a sense in which slander is the most cruel of all sins, he states. If a man's goods are stolen, he can set to and build up his fortunes again. But if a man's good name is taken away, irreparable damage has been done to him. He states it is one thing to start an evil, an untrue report on its malicious way. It is entirely another thing to stop it. Many a man and many a woman, he states, who would never dream of putting his or her head in other people's pockets and stealing their money or their belongings, thinks nothing, even finds pleasure in passing on a story which ruins someone else's good name without even trying to find out whether or not the story is true. There is slander enough in every town, and not infrequently, he states, in many a church to make the recording angel weep as he records these cruel words. End of quote. The ninth commandment of the Ten Commandments states, you shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. Have you lied on anybody lately? Just a malicious lie. Just because you're jealous of them? Because you want to harm them? Because God's using them greater than He's using you? Because God's blessing them greater than He's blessing you? Or just because you're just mean and you love to tear people down? I plead with you today. Don't live like everybody else. Repent of your malicious slandering, of your malicious lying, and give your heart to Jesus Christ today. Another trait that you see in people who are living like everybody else today is they're without self-control. They're without self-control. That word in the King James Version is incontinent, incontinent. And that word incontinent means undisciplined and uncontrolled. They have no self-control, no power to discipline themselves. They're given over to pleasure and indulgence, to passion and sexual craving, to lust and lewdness. It is a passion that grips and enslaves a person until it becomes an unbearable habit and bondage. The Bible says in Romans 6, 12, Therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body, that you should obey it in its lust. What is it that controls your life today? What controls your life today? Is it food? Is it sensuality? Is it sexual immorality? Is it pornography? Is it booze? Is it drugs? Is it gambling? Is it cursing? Is it sports? What controls your life today? Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 12, All things are lawful for me, but all things are not helpful. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Why should you live like everybody else? If you truly belong to Christ, you're to live like Christ. Today, repent of your lack of self-control and give your heart to Jesus. Another trait of the people of the last days, the people who are living like everybody else, is that they're brutal. They're brutal. That word brutal means fierce, savage, untamed. It is the word that describes the savage beast of the world that is unrestrained in its fierceness. People living like animals. It is a word that should never be true of people, but tragically it is. Never in the history of the world have men and women become as fierce and as savage as they are today. When someone murders someone, they don't just murder them, they mutilate them. 
They love to torture them. They love to kill people at random. They love to walk into churches and shoot people while they're worshiping. They love to walk into schools and shoot precious, defenseless children who are just coming to learn. They kill by twos and threes and by thousands and millions of people. Have you ever heard of the Holocaust? Over six million Jews were slaughtered by Adolf Hitler and his evil henchmen. And they took great pleasure in their torture. They took great pleasure in their savagery. I believe they were demon-possessed. And then in the world today, more Christians are being killed for their stance for Christ than at any time in history. People no longer just correct and rebuke their children, their spouse, their friend, their neighbors, their employer, stranger. They curse them. They abuse them. They threaten them. They attack them. They want to damage their personal property. They're very violent in, the, in their conduct. And it even goes on in churches. I know. In these last days, we see a dramatic increase in fierce and in savage behavior. Did this type of behavior describe you? John tells us in 1 John chapter 3, verse 15, whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. You say you belong to Jesus Christ. And you love to bully, intimidate, taunt, and threaten people, even in a place of worship. John says that you don't have the truth of Christ abiding in you. Why should you live like everybody else? If you truly belong to Christ, you're to live like Christ and repent of your brutal behavior and give your heart to Jesus today. Another trait of the people who live like everybody else, the people of the last days, is that they're despisers of those that are good. Despisers of those that are good. Laughing, making fun of, and mocking God's people has become a new national pastime in the United States of America. This culture has become so debased that it can no longer discern between right and wrong, good and evil. This culture mistakes right as being wrong. One who does not believe in nor support homosexuality, which is sexual perversion, is being called a homophobe and a bigot. Why? Because they are spiritually blinded by the devil. Romans 1.28 states, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. A debased mind is a mind that can no longer discern between right and wrong. A mind that has been turned over to God because it has refused to repent of its sexual perversion. When you get so far into sexual perversion that you no longer respond to the conviction of God, He'll turn you over to a debased mind where you can no longer discern between right and wrong. You're listening and you're watching this message today and you're involved in the homosexual lifestyle. I want you to know today that, that God is holding out for you. He loves you with His arms open wide today. and He wants you to repent of your sexual perversion and give your heart and give your life to Him today. He can fill the emptiness and the void in your life. He can give you peace and fulfillment like you've never, ever known. Today at the close of this message, I'm going to give you an opportunity to repent and to turn from your sin of homosexuality. Today, people are embarrassed to speak up for what is right. People are embarrassed to take a stand for what is good. They fear being castigated publicly. People are embarrassed to be known as good people. People are embarrassed to be a friend to God's people. The people of the last days want to fulfill their desires and to satisfy their flesh. They want to party, indulge, look, feel, taste, experience, 
possess, take, and even fit in and be accepted with everybody else, with the popular crowd. They throw their morals and their once strong sense of right and wrong out the door. And they reject all moral restraints to do only what feels good to them. They despise righteousness and want nothing to do with anyone who speaks up for what is right. You must think today how far a person and a society have fallen when they're embarrassed to say no to what they know is wrong and not good for them. Do you laugh at? Do you make fun of God's people? Do you mock them to their face and to their back? Because they live this book out before they speak it out. Is that you today? Are you making fun of God-fearing holy people? And are you unafraid to stand for righteousness in this decadent culture as they are doing? I don't believe I'd be attacking God's people. when I profess Christ and live like everybody else. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 10 and 11, especially those who walk according to the flesh in the lust of uncleanliness and despise authority, they're presumptuous, self-willed. They're not afraid to speak evil of dignitaries, whereas angels who are greater in power and might do not bring a reviling accusation against them before the Lord. Why should you live like everybody else? If you truly belong to Christ, you're to live like Christ. Repent of your hatred toward godly people today and give your heart to Jesus. Another trait, the people of the last days, the people who are living like everyone else, is they're traitors. They're traitors. A traitor fails and deserts their friends, their family, their country, their team in the time of need. This refers to a person who betrays any trust or any commitment. The most tragic betrayal of all is the person who betrays Christ and the church, the person who turns their back on Christ and returns to the world in its crowd. In these last days before Jesus returns, we see a dramatic increase in traitors. Are you a traitor? Have you betrayed the Lord's people who stood with you when you were having a hard time? The Lord Jesus states in Mark 13, 12 and 13, Now brother will betray brother to death, and a father his child, and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death, and you'll be hated by all for my name's sake. But he who endures to the end shall be saved." Why should you live like everybody else? If you truly belong to Christ, you're to live like Christ and repent of your betrayal, of your closest friends, of those who have stood with you in the dark times of your life. Repent of betraying those that you should be standing with today and give your heart to Jesus and you'll have the boldness and the confidence and the courage that they have to speak for Christ when no one else will. Another trade of the people who are living like everyone else, the people of the last days, they're headstrong. They're headstrong. One of my uncles calls it being bullheaded. Bullheaded. Headstrong means not easily restrained. It's hard to control you. You won't listen to advice or suggestions from anyone else because you're a know-it-all. You're directed by an ungovernable will. A headstrong person, a bullheaded person is reckless. A headstrong person, a bullheaded person is rash. A headstrong person, a bullheaded person is hasty. All without giving thought to the consequences of their bullheadedness. You call yourself a follower of Christ and you act like that, you need to repent. A headstrong person thinks he knows best and can live and act recklessly without paying any attention to the consequences. The reckless person thinks little about what they're doing. They just enjoy the feeling and the pleasure of kicking everybody around. They enjoy the stimulation and the excitement. The consequences matter little to them in the midst of their pleasure and their excitement to control people and kick people around. 
Think about how much hurt and damage is done when a person lives for the pleasure of the moment. Think about the hurt and the damage done because of your reckless lust and passion and desire for power over people. You have reckless people who drive, reckless people who are at work, or at play. They're reckless in the way they eat. They're reckless in the way they drink. They're headstrong. They're haughty. They think that they know best and that they can live and act recklessly without consequences. They do not realize the hurt, the accidents, the damaged bodies and the death that they bring upon people. Are you a headstrong person? Are you a bullheaded person refusing to listen to wise counsel before you act? The Lord Jesus tells us in Luke chapter 12, verses 16 through 21, Then He spoke a parable to them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully. And He thought within Himself, saying, What shall I do since I have no room to store my crops? So He said, I'll do this. I'll pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will store up all my crops and my goods. And I'll say to myself, So, you have many goods laid up for many years. Take your ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, Fool, this night your soul will be required of you. Then whose will those things be which you provided? So is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. Why should you live like everybody else today? Repent of your bullheadedness. Give your heart to Jesus. Right there where you are right now, I want you to pray with me. Dear Lord Jesus, you just pray with Him right now. Dear Lord Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I know that you died on the cross for me. I repent. I turn from all my sins. Please forgive me. I now accept you as my Savior and I follow you as my Lord. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus, and save me, I pray. I give to you, sweet Jesus, complete control of my life. Thank you for saving me. Give me the peace that I have been saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. You've been transformed by the power of God. Your name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life in heaven where it will never be erased. I want to help you in your new walk with Christ. You write to me today. And let me know of your decision and be sure and get involved in a good balanced Bible-believing church in the community where you live and ask your pastor to baptize you. I love you. God bless you today.